So in this video, I'm going to show how to use Swift UI to preview nib files and programmatic views. I want to start off with the final result and then I'll dive in and show how to do it. So right now this preview is of a nib created view. And then this programmatic view is all done programmatically and similarly has a preview. So the process is very similar to my previous video and I'll dive into that now. So to get started, I created a simple nib view with two labels and a corresponding nib file that does the auto layout. Super basic, uh, just to demonstrate the point. So in order to create our preview, it's gonna be very similar to the, the view controller preview. I'll put a link to that video in here as well. But the, the basic idea is the same as instead of a view controller, we're gonna have a view and two functions that'll configure it basically and then we'll use this in our previews. So I like to create a file called view preview. And we'll do the same thing that we did in the other video and conditionally import Swift UI and make sure we're in debug. Instead of a view, we're going to do UI view representable. We don't need this body. And then there's two functions, which is make UI view and update UI view. Since this isn't actually being used, we're just going to say no operation because the update doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to do a generic UI view type so that we can get access to the view and configure it. So the first initializer will be taking in a already created view. And then there'll be an optional config closure. And what this is gonna do is allow us to configure things on the view like the labels and colors and all kinds of stuff but we might not need it so that's why I have it optional so that it's not a requirement so this will most of the time be used by programmatically created views um, I'm just going to return a view here our view here I'll fix this uh, error Okay, and then for the nib loading, we're going to have another initializer. It's going to take the bundle and the name of the nib and then another config closure. So we'll create the nib. and instantiate it. Then we're going to take the top level view and use that as our view. Uh, this works in this example. If you have your own nibs that are more complicated, you could create your own initializers that load them correctly, but the concept is the same. So in this simple example, I'm just grabbing the first item in the view stack and assuming that's going to be the view. And then now that we have the view, we're just going to call the other initializer. And 
And that is it for our view preview. Now we just need to use it. So do the same macro checks. And the point of this is so that these previews won't ship with our actual application. And in order to generate our preview, it has to conform to preview provider. As soon as we do that, it loads up a preview on the right. Looks like it has a cached version of what I was playing around with earlier. So the function or the computer property is previews. We're going to return a group so that we could have multiple previews in here if we want. But for now, we'll just have one preview. Uh, to fix this error, it's the same thing. Just have to make sure we put it on a struct so it applies to everything inside. And then here we'll do view preview with the type of our view, which is nib view. And we'll use the nib initializer. If I could get it, there we go. The bundle is main, the nib file is named nib view. And then we're going to use this closure to now configure the properties of the view. So I'll make the title label text, I'll make it spark code with an exclamation point. And then the description. Could also add an exclamation point. Very creative. And then now, if we resume our previews, we should see these changes. Okay, so if I zoom in, we could see it. Uh, to make the font bigger, we can set the size category just to prototype out and see you know, how our fonts react and everything. So I'll do accessibility large. And then we see that our description labels wrapping multiple lines as it should be, and everything looks good. So we could do the same process for programmatic views as well. So I'm just going to copy paste this, bring it over to programmatic view. And then instead of using the nib initializer, we're going to programmatically create the view. So we'll rename this, we could delete, take these out. Delete this guy. So now we'll just programmatically create our view and then configure it. Okay, so same thing as the nib created view preview. Um, in the config file, we could do any configuration we want in more complex views that could be, um, you know, dependency injecting things and whatever you really want. Uh, it's super powerful to prototype views out and just see how they react to different uh, font sizes and, you know, orientations, whatever you want to play around with without ever having to run the app. So that's it for this video.